Welcome to Heat Check. We're going to look at the top 10 highest selling vintage denim items over the last two weeks on eBay. This video is sponsored by WeBuyOldJeans.com. All right, coming in at number 10, we have this vintage Jeep Levi's advertising denim hanging banner. Yes, this thing is made of denim itself. Look at that beautiful denim. Uh, yeah, in the 70s, uh, Levi's started doing like interior trims for like Jeeps and um, some other vehicles that you could get trimmed with Levi's denim. Uh, if I ever make it big, I will definitely be picking up one of those vehicles because uh, this is pretty sick. We got the 501. Uh, this would have been uh, like selvage denim, basically. Uh, as you can see, 30 by 36. Clearly, this is not that uh, size. Uh, but it's probably just a, one of their standard patches they pulled off. Uh, we have a little E uh, on the tab. Here's the back side. This is such a cool piece. Uh, and it's in, in, in like exceptionally good condition. So uh, that really makes this thing stand out a big time. Uh, 23 bids later. This thing sold for $1,136.11. Then at number nine, we have this supposedly 1930s 506XX vest in a size 44. I'm not so sure it's uh, 1930s, but either way, it is a type one. And we see these on the list all the time. Obviously, unfortunately, the sleeves are ripped right off of this one. Um, but, uh, and it has some paint, some paint, uh, splatters on it. Uh, either way, it's not crazy to see these guys on this list, even if they have the sleeves torn or, uh, cut off, uh, cause they are rare and they are still in demand. Uh, so even though this one did not have any sleeves and does have some clear and obvious wear, this one still sold for $1,200. So even in a vest condition, you can get over $1,000 for one of these. That is incredible. Then next up, we have a Levi's Type 3. It's the 557XX, which we do see fairly often. Uh, this one is pretty nice. The condition is pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, the patch is still legible and clear. Um, and the color of the denim is still pretty good. Uh, the wear is not too new, too terrible for a pretty old jacket. And it's a size 46. So that is uh, uh, always going to command a premium when you're in these larger sizes. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of these type threes from the early 60s go for good money. Uh, I'm actually surprised this one went for only $1,200 because I do think this could have gone a little bit higher. But $1,200 is what it sold for. Uh, I'm sure it made some people happy uh, on both sides. How about a beautiful Type 3 557 XX? Speaking of Type 3s, this is probably the most valuable uh, 505 Type 3 we have ever seen on this list, um, as far as I can remember. But we have a dead stock uh, 505, which is pretty unusual. Do not see them very often. You do not normally see them with the tags, that's for sure. The patch is cracked because that's what happens to these Jack Ron patches after uh, so many years. It is a size 40, but look at the denim on this thing. It is crispy. Uh, obviously, it's a big E, so we're looking at probably late 60s, uh, maybe even to the early 70s on this thing. Uh, but it is unbelievably beautiful right here. Uh, so Such good condition. You're not going to find uh, them in this condition almost ever. Uh, so it does make sense that it did go for $1,299.95. Definitely one of the best Type 3s we have ever seen on this list. So if you think you have a pair of jeans that might end up on this list, we recommend you check out WeBuyOldJeans.com. These guys are the best in the business. They can give you appraisals. They can help you with research. Or they can make an offer on your jeans. They offer reasonable prices and great customer service. So we highly recommend our friends over at WeBuyOldJeans.com. Then next up, we have a really interesting one here. We have a Lee jacket. This is a 1965 Princeton beer jacket. Let's take a look at this design on the back. Uh, what's cool about these jackets is a lot of times these would be like uh, senior jackets or letterman jackets. If you were in uh, high school or college, you would have a jacket that got painted or some sort of art would be done on them. Uh, and that would be sort of a commemorative of your time at whatever uh, educational facility you 
uh, chose to go to. In this case, it was Princeton, and somebody had, uh, I guess it's uh, Reeb, I don't know, Reb, on the back. But look at this. Super cool. Uh, it's the, yeah, beer jacket. Let's take a look on the front end. This is a chore coat, obviously. Kind of looks like a lab coat, really. Um, but looks like it's in pretty good condition. Uh, definitely a 60s uh, lead jacket. Uh, size 38 long, so obviously that makes sense with the, the length. Um, but these uh, customized ones are always in demand. They're always uh, sought after and desired because uh, they are basically historic period pieces. So that's pretty cool. In this case, this jacket sold for 1350 Lee makes back-to-back -back appearances here. We have this 1940s Lee Cowboy, Sanfordized denim, World War II era, probably. Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure if you can get super specific on this, but uh, look at this deep, dark denim. This basically looks new old stock. There's a little bit of wear. It, it appears maybe it was washed a little bit for sure, but man, you do not find these in this good a condition almost ever. Uh, there is the uh, Union stamp. Yeah, definitely not uh, unwashed, but man, they did not wear it out. That's for sure. Uh, beautiful, beautiful denim all the way around. The, the color is so deep and dark. Let's take a look. There's a double selvage. That's pretty unusual for a, uh, a, Lee, a pair of Lee jeans um, as the selvage, or at least the, the shown selvage, exposed selvage, uh, sort of disappeared as the years went by. They went down to double, from double selvage to single selvage uh, to no exposed selvage. So in this case, this pair sold for $1,400. Exceptionally nice pair. So next up at number four, we have a new old stock Headlight overall chore coat. Headlight was a smaller but uh, fairly prominent company uh, from the Midwest that made workwear. Uh, they eventually were like merged with Fink and then bought by Carhartt and it's a long uh, history that uh, isn't super well documented, but uh, Headlight is a fairly sought after and desirable brand from that era. Uh, I actually just uh, passed one through my own possession not too long ago, so pretty cool. Uh, this one looks beautiful. Uh, I always thought this this is, look. take a look at this interior label. Is that not a bit gaudy for the 1940s? Um, I don't feel like anyone was doing something this gaudy and like ex like eccentric um, at this time, but uh, Headlights decided to do it. We have a lot 19 and size 48, so nice big size. Uh, looks like they were pre-shrunk in this case, but beautiful. I don't think that's the original plastic packaging or anything like that. But um, there are there are a little a few issues, uh, just probably from storage. So it is what it is. Not too bad. Like a little bit of maybe like water damage. I don't know what you can call that. But a beautiful piece of headlight history here. Uh, this one sold for seventeen hundred dollars. Then at number three, we have a pair of Levi 501s. We do see these from time to time. This is the 1966 model. These are dead stock, so you know they're going to command a high price. Um, I think we've had some of these on the list probably, a, I don't know, probably every week for the last, like, six months. Uh, but look, what's interesting about this pair is that it does have the S above the 501. Uh, so this dates it to the late 60s, most likely. This S... Uh, this S note letter here uh, supposedly was potentially part of a grading system that uh, Levi's used for a you know short period of time. You would see letters like S or A uh, above or beside the 501. Uh, it still is a little bit of a mystery as to what that's all about. But you can see here uh, something else that helps date this pair is the Levi spelled with a lowercase e. Uh, this was uh, patented in '67. Or not patented, but trademarked in 67. Uh, but it did not reach the tabs until 71. So this gives us a good idea that these were in that in-between time period from 67 to 71 or so. A beautiful dead stock pair of Levi's. Always going to command a high price. Next up, we have a Type 2. This is the uh, Next up, we have a Type 2. Uh, this one... Next up, we have a Type 2 denim jacket here. Uh, this is the 507 model. This one 
Uh, it's been up for a little while, and uh, actually had uh, opportunity to buy it privately, but uh, couldn't work out a deal. Uh, and sounds like this guy, the seller, got a much better deal on eBay than he would have gotten otherwise. So congratulations to him. But we have a Type Two. It's pretty beat up. Uh, supposedly owned by a novice rockhound. So this is what the, the jacket he used out in the field. It's got some damage. Uh, Let's see, it's got some wear, definitely some soiling, some damage on the arms, uh, which is kind of a bummer. But it's a Type 2, and you never know. You can always seem to find a, a, a buyer at a decent price here. Uh, this one sold for $2,400. Then at number one this week, we have another Type 2 507, but this one is in beautiful condition. It still has, look at that, it still has the leather patch, even though the leather patch is... Uh, quite fractured there. Uh, this would indicate this is an early era Type 2 uh, coming right off of the Type 1s in the early to mid 50s. Beautiful, beautiful condition. Uh, I don't see there's any major flaws. Um, maybe it's a little bit of discoloration, but largely this feels like almost, almost new condition. So yeah, you don't find them in excellent condition uh, like this that often, so they're always going to command a high price. The Type 2 and or Type 1 Levi's denim jackets often are the top of this list. Can't do much about it because there's still so much in demand. Uh, but this one it was an exceptional price. After 27 bids, this jacket sold for $5,300. That is the power of... The Levi's Type 2 in such good condition, even though it is a fairly small size. Anyway, that's the number one spot here on the Heat Check. We'll see you guys next time.